Alrighty, what is up guys? Evan Aldo here. So, latest <laughs> crazy, we finally, you know, it was boring for a while, we finally uh, broke downward a bit as predicted. And latest trades I've been making um, in the exclusive Discord here, an a Cardano short entry. Um, we almost very close to getting the first take profit, um, came back up a little bit, um, very, very close, like within a cent, I believe. And uh, Bitcoin short, Ethereum short from before, did the starter shorts the other day, added to them, hit both first take profits, looking for Ethereum hit two take profits, so I'm to the third take profit next now. And then Bitcoin um, hit, I believe, at least one take profit. And we had a scalp Bitcoin long, this got stopped out in profit. It was a nice little trade. So we've been killing it in the exclusive Discord lately. Not right 100% of the time, you know, nobody is. Um, you'd be a billionaire pretty quickly, so risk management's always very important. But uh, we've had some really good trades in here. So uh, if you're interested, link in the description below. I do some uh, TA on stocks, I share my charts with spiral lines, all of that. Um, if you're interested, it's through Patreon, link below. So, you know, let's get into Bitcoin right now. You know, let's see what could happen. You know, um, it, it's an interesting time because, you know, right now, what, what do we have to go on? Bitcoin's normally following you know, the stock market right now. And the stock market um, follows real estate to a certain extent. We're talking about real estate a little bit. I want to talk about everything today, kind of get into everything. So, you know, weekly green dot, that's always your bullish point. It hasn't worked out too well uh, lately. Um, it looks like it's going to play out more like 2014 where we come down farther. I'm not convinced we hit a bottom. Fed is still, you know, looks to be raising interest rates like crazy. They are panicking. They can't handle this inflation. I didn't think they'd raise them that much. And what these interest rates are doing is they're, they're suppressing crypto, number one. Number two, you know, risk on assets. Number two, they're suppressing the S&P 500 uh, stock market, NASDAQ. And what they're not really suppressing or suppressing very little is, you know, prices of oil, consumer goods, those things. And we're going to talk about those things um, Lastly, uh, as well, we're going to talk about oil. That's the last thing I'm going to talk about. I want to talk about a lot today. So we'll go through Bitcoin, you know, kind of quickly, kind of what I think could happen in the shorter term here. So, you know, this red dot on the two day, last time this happened, we crashed down quite a bit. Now, in terms of, you know, everybody wants to know, you know, where are we going to bottom out? You know, in terms of more short term, if we repeat something like this, you know, if you don't count that wick, because these, you know, capitulation wicks down don't happen too, too often, you know, 23% downward. So if we come down another 23% from here, and this could be more exaggerated, this may not just, you know, give us, you know, happen extremely quickly. 22K, about that round there, 22K. So that could happen in August, September, a few months is where I think it will happen based on, you know, how I've been kind of mapping it out. If we look at, you know, a good indication of when we're going to bottom out here, we could look at our 10 day. 10 day money flow crossover. This basically signified very close to the bottom and the green dot signified the bottom. Same deal in uh, 2018. Basically, that money flow crossover. When would that happen? July, August, September, somewhere around that area. October, the latest, probably. If you map it out like that, usually once it starts coming down, it comes down quick in these two times. So, you know, it could happen beginning of August there. And that could give us. You know that uh, I want to go on the weekly and show you the 200 moving average. This is the 300 moving average. This is kind of the lowest you know we've really gone. This is our black swan event right here where we went. Um, that would be you know crazy. You know 17, 17k. A lot of altcoins would probably go down another 80 percent, even 90 percent if if that happens. If we do go down to the 16, 17k range, it would have to take you know a crazy, crazy desperate Fed going nuts at that point to really bring us down that low. In my opinion. Stock market would be really low, in my opinion, at that point. I don't think we're going to go that low. Um, what I think is more likely, and what we typically bounce off of, look, bottom right here, you know, right over what I've been saying, 22, 23K, that area we could hit for a nice bottom in August. That's what I think could generally happen. A lot of things would add up and, you know, look the right way. Look how they should look for a bottom if that does happen. So that's what I think is going to most likely happen. And, you know, your commodities will probably keep going up until that happens. They could continue to go up even after that. We'll talk about oil, you know, commodities in general in just a little bit. It's starting to get crazy. It's starting to become front page news, kind of like Bitcoin was at the end of uh, 2020, beginning of 2021. And what happened there? You know, it went up for another couple months into April. Then it came back down. Then you had one last hurrah. 
in, into November. So it could be something like that. I don't think you'll have a double top pattern for commodities or oil, but I think you got a few more months. Would bring us out to August, September. That'd be a big place. We'll talk about that some more in just a second. Let me look at some lower time frames here. You know, money flow crossover on the uh, on the five hour right here. You know, this could easily bring us you know some percentage like this, you know, an eighteen percent downward, something like here, and that's more eighteen percent. Be right around there, twenty four k that area. You know, depending, that could happen. Could happen kind of quickly too. That could be the eighteen percent. Then you come up a bit more. Then you come back down. You bounce around here a bit. It could be too more of like a situation. What we're due for is why I circled this more sideways or our mini bear market last uh, summer right here could be like this, and that would bring us down to could bring us down to twenty two in the worst cases. So we could be more of a range bound area instead of thirty k to forty k here. It could be more like twenty five k to thirty five k. Then you bottom out, you continue forward in August, September for a nice rally back. Um, towards the end of the year, where could you end up? Eh, definitely a nice double. You could end up back to 40K, maybe even 50K in some good circumstances by the end of the year. Um, definitely what I would see. In terms of real short term, eh, you seem to be getting a little bit of a bounce off of the spiral line here, a little bit of a bounce. And money flow is generally just curving up there in the 15 minute. So it looks kind of good. I think you can come up a little bit more. Friday nights tend to, from my experience in this market, tend to look pretty bullish. And then it, it just doesn't amount to much. And then you just come back down and you're more sideways with weird sideways volatility on the weekends. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, in my opinion, are probably the worst days to trade, the toughest days to trade in terms of how things play out. Mondays through Thursdays are definitely the best. So, you know, risk less money when you're trading Friday, Saturday, Sundays. And that would be, or just don't trade at all. That'd be some good advice there. Um, let's look at Ethereum. I mean, this looks bad in all sorts of ways. Um, it's similar to Bitcoin though. Um, money flow crossover into the red finally in the weekly. Um, the last time this happened, I mean, you're not gonna like this number. This is you know, insane, obviously, like 80% downward. Um, that would be probably, you know, if Bitcoin goes down at you know, 16, 17K, that would be, yeah, these are, I don't think it's gonna happen, but that's basically 50% 50, 50 down for Bitcoin. Ethereum would probably come down. It's not gonna be 80%, but it could come down, you know, maybe this is worst possible case scenario, you know, probably 60 to 70% this area right here. However, what's more likely is, and we have, that's a 300 week moving average and 900 on, on Ethereum, it could hold because Ethereum's, you know, big areas. This is, you know, if it gets really, really bad. What I think is more likely, this is a possibility, the 200 week moving average, about 1100. There's a big FIB level as well we could draw at, this is for a bottom at the same time as Bitcoin, basically a big FIB level. This general area, 1100 is huge because that would bring us from where we are right now down another 30%. If Bitcoin goes down another 20%, it would make sense for Ethereum to kind of come down 30%, maybe a little bit, give or take a little bit more for a market cycle bottom. That would make a lot of sense. You'd be pretty deep in the uh, in the red here, August. And it's kind of the same, you know, general timeline as when we came deep in the red, you know, this last time to the bottom, it would look similar. It looks similar on the, uh, you know, August, September, it looks similar on the money flow on the weekly. Um, moving onward, I mean, obviously Bitcoin dominance is still going up. A lot of people have been asking me about altcoins. You know, we did the Cardano short. Altcoins, you know, it's a few months, just a few months to hold off, I would say. And then when it looks like, and when Bitcoin's at that 22K, when it looks like it bottomed, then maybe a good idea to start getting into altcoins. The only thing with altcoins is if history repeats itself like it usually does here, Bitcoin will still outperform them even after they bottom out. Bottom Altcoins will bottom out at the same time as Bitcoin, you know, versus USD, versus the US dollar, but Bitcoin will outperform them for at least, you know, I think six months after, a few months after. So could get into them, but this is a lot of, this is the Bitcoin maxi season. The bear market is the Bitcoin maxi season. A lot of people are really getting burnt right now with altcoins. This is uh, just still kind of losing major support right here. So, you know, nothing really looks good for ETH right now. We confirm that you know, blood diamond on the 16, um, 16 hour right there. This could give you, you know, potentially, um, let's see right here. You know, if you come down at that 40%, that would be a really, let's see, does that bring you, where does that bring you? Right around to that thousand or 1100, that could be a nice, market cycle bottom. Um, 
I think it's going to take longer than just, I, I would like to have it happen quicker, but I think it's going to definitely take a lot longer than just 10 days here. You'll probably bounce around. You know, it's going to be a more of a bounce around type thing for a bit. Um, probably a more boring summer too, kind of like how we saw last summer. Um, not too much of a reason to think it'll be too much different, but just a you know, more extreme version, a lower version with different range bounds. So yeah, that's Ethereum. Um, this is you know the main perspective. So if Ethereum comes down 30%, Bitcoin down, it comes down in the 20, 20% to the bear market bottom, all coins, it'll probably be 40 to 50%, which is what I've been thinking um, a lot. So 40 to 50%, 40 to 50, 45%, 30 cents for Cardano. That might be a nice bottom for Cardano. Um, probably if Bitcoin goes down to 17, 16K, like really bad scenarios, it's probably gonna, the next major point after that is 15 cents, 75% down from here. So that is a possibility. I don't think it's very likely. I think it's more likely we hold 30 cents, but yeah, it is what it is. Um, so that's basically crypto. Look, I mean, big opportunities coming. You know, uh, this is, we're getting very close to the point where big opportunities are coming to get in at the bottom. Those are rare opportunities where you could get, you know, 10x, maybe even more. You know, if this if Bitcoin goes down to 22K and it ends up at 150K in the next cycle, under 20K, I mean, that's, you know, that's a, what, a 6x in just a couple of years, probably. So that's huge. That's huge. Moving on to, you know, some other asset classes, you know, let's look at, let's look at the S&P 500. I mean, this is where it looks like we're probably going to go into a recession because, you know, when you come down this deep, you know, usually with the money flow on the weekly and, you know, we could rebound like the, do something like this rebound, then come back, you know, it could be a pattern like this and you just come right back up. Um, and you kind of avoid, you know, avoid it. But look, I mean, money flow has been in the green for so long. It looks like we're so due to come into the red. If we do come into the red here, next big point is 350. You come down to 350. After that, you know, if you look historically after a 27% drop down, in all likelihood, you'd probably come up a bit, you know, in the recession, maybe stay range bound a bit for, it could be a couple boring couple of years, you know, just for not as bad as an 08, but a pretty decent recession there. Or you could have a small recession where you just come down to 350 in you know, September, October, maybe even August, and then slowly recover there with crypto. You know, slowly recover with crypto there. That's another big possibility as well. If you look at your three day, you're in the red. You know, Historically, most times you come into the red, you're almost at the bottom there. We could repeat something like this and then you know, stay range bound for a few towards even the end of the year, just kind of stay very, very boring right there. And then, then come back up. It'd probably be borderline whether you kind of get into a recession there. I mean, it's obviously unemployment factors, other things. But you know, if you come really back you know, here, it's just the start of all the trauma, just the start of the trauma downward um, of 08. Or if you go back to um, 2001, same type of deal. Doesn't look too good. And you know, we have the blood diamond there as well. Monthly, you know, extremely, extremely overheated. You know, the monthly looks, you know, these two recessions right here, it's at the same level before you had your drop down. You know, look, you had your, your drop down right there, then a lot worse, you had your drop down right there. You know, some people probably thought it was over, a little bit of green, a lot worse. So that's what could happen. These monthly red X's typically um, are the bottom unless there's a recession. Does seem to be imminent here. Does seem to be an imminent recession here. It seems like we got to come out a bit more. You know, where could you end up? You know, worst case, you know, these recessions, a lot of recessions definitely take you down around 50%. Um, that would be crazy. That's so low. Yeah. That would be take us all the way back to, not saying this is going to happen, but take us all the way back to 2017. Um, with all the money printing and everything, it could get, you know, things could, things could get ugly. <laughs> things could ultimately get you know, pretty ugly stagflation, all that, you know? Yeah. So let's look at real estate because you know, we got to look at you know, what we have here. A lot of people, um, I like to look at real estate. A lot of people do have been looking at real estate too, because obviously you know, we had no secret that it went up so much and it follows, you know, follows pretty good. The S and P 500 things that don't follow it as well, obviously commodities, gold, um, crypto, S and P 500, NASDAQ and real estate follow one another. Everything else pretty much doesn't. Um, so yeah, money flow generally coming out for the past while here, past eight years or more, you're hitting a major point, but you got the red X in the monthly, so it's indicative of a possible bottom there. Raising interest rates is messing with it a lot. 
it looks like you want to come down a little bit more here, especially since we've been in the green for so long on the weekly. Kind of the same thing on the S&P 500. And this yellow X I don't like because these yellow Xs, I mean, it was indicative of a bottom here, but you did come down a bit farther. And let's look at how it was with the yellow Xs on the, you know, last time, 07. I mean, came down a bit more. So it's more choppy for real estate, but I do think it's likely you come down at least 86 bucks here in the next few months for maybe a nice buying opportunity for real estate in a few months. You get a lot of panic sellers. I mean, not going to be as bad as 08. There's so many things, you know, we're not giving mortgages to anybody. Give mortgages to a lot of people, but not not like 08 where is anyone with a pulse. So not as bad, not as or 07, not as bad as there, but you come back a few years here, you know, pre-pandemic numbers, March 2019, which is pretty good for if you're looking to get a house. Um Looks like we're losing that major support right there as well. So it seems like it just could go down. Um, maybe options on this, try for this area, you know, never financial advice though. Same with S&P 500. Tesla, same deal. I'm not gonna look at Tesla right now, but you know, coming down to maybe, you know, sub 500 is huge for Tesla. Probably a big buying opportunity. Oil, you know, let's take a look at oil. Seems like we're breaking up above, you know, a major point right here. Your monthly has that, uh, that green dot right there. So that's indicative of just coming down. Let's see what percentage we're gonna come down here. That's indicative of coming down 80%, guys, 80%, good. But no, honestly, like if something bullish didn't, you know, play out the last time, time after it usually plays out at least a little bit more. Weekly, um, weekly is, uh, you're about to get, you know, once you get this bearish div. So the bearish div doesn't, it could take a while to happen here. And this could be where we finally bottom out in August or something when it finally does happen, when it's view up and finally curves down. If money flow is coming out while you have the bearish div, that's more indicative of a top. You're, you didn't really have it on this bearish div, you know, you had it kind of curving around, but it wasn't too, too bad here. But when you're getting multiple bearish divs and they're getting higher up and money flow is getting really overheated like it was over here, then you're towards the top. So I think you could get up to 120 and that would be where the real panic is. Everybody fumbles into going long in oil or whatever. You know, people are probably still hesitant for it because come on, it's oil. We all know there's going to be, you know, with electric cars and everything, there's going to be less of a use for it. It's pretty obvious. So yeah, actually let's show, I'll show you a Tesla for the last one. Obviously it's a blue chip stock or somebody thinks so. Kind of the same deal as S&P 500. I think there's a good shot. You come back to this point probably you know sub 500 we go into the red in the weekly that could definitely be a local bottom you know this could act more how like amazon acted well not necessarily amazon but you know some of the good things that you know did pretty well in 08 or you know strong companies of its time you just come down instead of you know you come down maybe another 30 percent instead of a lot more with some other things can so hitting this pocket here sub 500 Big buying opportunity. When would that make? When would that happen? A lot of things are really factoring into August, September for money flow crossovers into the red here. So I think that's when things become pretty cheap. Raising interest rates, they'll probably do it until that time. Then they'll lay off because it'll just you know every, there'll be such a big panic with everything going down, going into recession. I don't know what'll happen. Things could get pretty ugly here. You know, this is a time to be um, definitely a little cautious. Um, you know, the biggest thing, you know, never financial advice, obviously, I don't know exactly what's going to happen. Biggest thing right now is to be prepared for, you know, potential Bitcoin you know, bear market bottom. Those are rare, rare bear market bottoms because even, you know, let's be real, even if you get the S&P 500 at the bottom, in all likelihood, a bear market bottom for Bitcoin will outperform that. This could be what we see, you know, if we go into a major recession, what we see, we could see a Bitcoin bottom out and then do well bottom out in August, September, then do well after that. And we could see an S&P 500 keep going down where Bitcoin acts, you know, more like gold for the first time. And, you know, let's look at, let's look at gold um, one more time. I think you'll still outperform it, you know, if you get into Bitcoin, you know, in a few months, but obviously as always, anything could happen. Gold on the, uh, where is it? The weekly, I think was weekly here. Seems like it'll repeat some pattern like this and come up. I think you'll come up, you know, a bit more. It looks like we're reversing around. You'll come up with this, especially this uh, trigger wave, you know, your green dot below, green dot right there. You come up a bit more. Where could that bring us up to? You could shoot up quite a bit. I mean, you could repeat something like, 
you know, this from here, August 19 to August 20, this year area, and you know, more of a uh, situation like kind of like this. I mean, it is a year. It could take some time to happen, but you know, May, June, you know, maybe, uh, what was that percentage again? I forgot the percentage. Give me one second. Oops. 45%. So something like this, 45% upward, you know, that 2,500 in a year, that's pretty good. You know, that's pretty good. Um, getting, still getting in Bitcoin, low 20s, I think is probably a better proposition. Um, oil, you know, what I've been saying with oil is it's kind of getting to the point where everybody's talking about it um in the commodities in general so usually once everybody's talking about something it's a few more months at the most before you know before the opportunity is gone to make money off of it to make money going along or you know buying call options on it so that's that hope you guys got something out of this video wanted to uh you know kind of prepare you and kind of prepare you for what i think's gonna happen you know i'm never right 100 percent of the time but that's just on my you know my humble opinion based on my analysis and what's gonna happen so yeah guys all right, guys, hope you have a wonderful weekend. Um, like the, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Again, my exclusive Discord, link in the description below. If you're interested, so I'm like, take profits, entry points, stop losses, check that out. Um, if you want to get my course, link in the description below. As well, the course goes over everything you need to know to theoretically be a profitable trader, risk management, trading psychology, why I think the majority of people lose in this game, all my strategies, a lot of people have really, really liked it. So check that out, link and discount code in the description below. Um, if you want to do, create, get some into some trading, Bybit, Phoenix, you can trade on there. Use my link in the description below. There's some good promos going on right now. And Market Cipher, link in the description below, discount code down below as well. And if you want to do a one-on-one -on -one session with me, link in the description below, discount code, or link in the description below as well. <laughs> no discount code on that. And yeah, um, that should be all, guys. I think you could even go along on gold and Femex as well, so check that out. All right, guys, have a good one. Goodbye.